Okay, so I drew the short straw on this. Um, I'm doing case management. Hands up those who are using Civi and are using Civi Case. Hands up those who are... Who, th who think they have a need where they could use Civi Case. And those who don't know what I'm talking about. Cool. Thank you. Okay. So, Civi Case from concept to creation in 27 and a half minutes. Key concept. Think about a lawyer. A lawyer has a briefcase, and in that briefcase they have a whole load of documents, and as they get a new document, they keep adding them into their briefcase and they take it around with them. Civi case is a container. That's the fundamental of it. It's a container for activities to go in, except in some cases you need to know that this person's connected to this activity and that this activity should happen five days after that activity. So... We're able, through cases, to collect up all these activities, to create the relationships of the people to that, those activities or to the, sort of the, the, the instigator of the case. We're able to build timelines that are both pre-scheduled, like I want to make a cup of tea and therefore I need to do this, do this, do this, and you need to make sure that the water sits in the, in the teapot for three minutes before you do the last step. So you can, you can schedule how long something should take after an earlier step, whether it's the initial step or a subsequent step. And permissions, Civi Case was built by some awesome developers in Canada who worked for a public health organisation who needed something that would really make sure your data was secure. So Civi Case comes default, it's going to look after your data and you can, um, you know, you can stretch it and bend it from there. But basically... Uh, cases are pretty well protected. Uh, cases can be used for simple and complex ones, and I'm going to run through a few examples of each. Um, organising an event. I started trying to build one for Civicon, but I got lost, so thank heavens that job was Justin's here. Um, ensuring a venue's booked. Catering needs to be booked at least two weeks prior to the end date. Signage needs to be done ten days prior to the end date. Feedback should be analysed within ten days after the event so that you can then write your blog post and keep all, the, every, all your managers happy. Um, grant applications. Civi already has Civi grant, but often the complexity around saying, OK, well, we've got a grant deadline that's here, and two weeks prior to that, I need to have got my proposal to my boss because they need to sign off it, and da-da-da. All of those can be set up um, through Civi case. Um, another scenario... Uh, we were working with an organisation, a uh, sustainability organisation. They basically needed people to go in and uh, look at the low-income, poorly insulated houses, work out how they could get the grants from to help it happen, get in the contractors. Da -da. So um, these, are, these are some of the scenarios uh, we've built or, um, or played with. Um, we'll go into a bit more detail on a couple of these. Uh, we work with an organisation who has to pick up all the kids who f get thrown or fall out of the school system. There's a lot of integration, there's a lot of, um, I was going to say nosy people, I don't mean that, uh, there's a lot of people who want to ob observe what's going on in these cases, the education department, the previous school, the kids need to go through a bunch of meetings to decide whether they should go to a sort of an army-based alternative provider or an outdoor alternative provider or a, a Māori whānau-based um, provider. Um, and they need to keep checking. Have they set their goals? Are they meeting their achievements? Have they attacked anybody? Um, and so on and so on. And in each of those cases, obviously, if, if they've attacked somebody, the Ministry of Education wants to know instantly and so on and so on. Um, or a union advocating on behalf of members about some work or pay disputes. Um, or another interesting one we did, church group distributing Christmas presents to the children of prisoners. Believe me, this gets re really complex quickly. <laughs> Alternative education. So I'm, I'm hoping that the bold bits over on the right will help us work through these. Um, and it's better to talk to the microphone, not to the screen. Um, so first thing, student gets suspended out of school. They didn't turn up or they uh, beat up a teacher, unfortunately. Um, they then get passed over to the alternative umbrella organisation, which has meetings with them and the teachers and the parents and social welfare, to then decide which type of alternative provider to place them with. Though that alternative provider then has to accept them, at which case, yay, case 
um, the case has been assigned to the provider. So case was opened when the first form got submitted. Case has now been assigned to a provider. A uh, student has meetings and meetings and meetings with providers, setting their goals, working out how they're going to work their way through. With each of these, the providers all have access to the site. None of them ever get into slash CVCRM anything. They're all working within views and web forms. So this is a nice follow-on from what Gemma did. Um, so they will come to the screen. They will have a list of all of their students. They'll be able to click on a link that jumps them to a web form for that student to set their goals, to say they've attended a meeting, to mark down what the latest achievements were, how many credits they've achieved, and so on. Each time they do that, on the web form, it knows who the student is, it knows that they've got a case, so it bangs that activity into the case. So there's that brief case, filling up with documents. Um, in this case, I threw this in, um, thanks to Eileen for building this amazing interface. So in this case, they need to record student activities as well. Um, Eileen cooked up a way where we're using CIVI report. This is actually the only time they get into CIVI, um, is that we've cooked up a CIVI report that pulls up all of the one activity per student per week, and they can then just go through actually on the report, clicking into each of the cells and setting whether they're uh, uh, present. present, justified absence, unjustified absence, and we haven't got a clue. Public holiday. Public holiday. Thank you, Gemma. <laughs> uh, today is a public holiday. It's Labor Day in New Zealand. Thank you, the Labor government, for managing to organise a public holiday within three days of getting elected. Whoa. <laughs> I'm impressed. Um, OK, student attacks another student. Activities added. Student transfers to another provider because they didn't quite fit with the military. They want to go far now, vice versa. Activity is added. Case assignee is changed. Um, student gains credits for certain topics, activity. You're getting the idea. You're reading faster than I'm talking, but maybe only just. Uh, and then once a case is closed, whew, done. No, didn't work. Student's out again. Open a new case. You've got a whole case there with all of that information. Closed, locked, start a new case. That's good. New case created. I won't take you around the loop again, but it happens. Um, Prison Fellowship. Um, yeah, this gets complicated because prisoners are known to have children with other parents who are also prisoners, who have other children with other prisoners, who are all being looked after by, believe me, a wide range of caregivers. So what we're needing to do in this case is say, right, the prisoner wants a Christmas present delivered to their child on their behalf, but of course we have to check with the caregiver that it's okay, because after all there might be a bit of an issue between the prisoner and the caregiver or the prisoner and the child. Um, so case pending, have to confirm it with the caregiver, caregiver gives the thumbs up, case gets opened or closed. Um, prisoners said what the present's going to be, what the message is going to be. Then we decide which church group, regionally, because it's kind of a, a localised system, so the church groups then just get allocated who's going to purchase gifts for which children. Other church groups may take on the delivery job. All of this is getting pushed into the case management process. Again, all of the information is getting pushed back out through views in nice, easy, web, uh, in nice, easy displays so that if I'm the, um, the person for the church group in my region... I will go there, I will see only my cases, I will see only my caregivers, I won't get anywhere near any of the other, of the other data. Do they actually only see the gifts? They don't... they don't actually see the... That's right, they, they, they just see you've got to deliver a gift somewhere, they don't even see the other information. Um, gift delivered, activity confirmed, case closed, let's move on to reporting. Oh, let's do that in views, that's good. Um, union members, so nice new challenge here. Mr. Ross, um, members raise an issue with members' services team, case pending. Industrial office team, the, the industrial team, accept the case and then assign it to one of their people to be the lead person on it. So case is made active, case manager is assigned. Um, the industrial officer investigates, determines what the next steps are, and believe me, there is a massive range of various options that take place at that point. So the beauty here is that we're building case types 
that meet our need. We're creating activity types for particular case types that meet the needs of that case. And if we need some custom fields, which we do, we can put them directly on the case or we can put them on the activities that get slotted into the case. Uh, so example, so every one of these is a unique activity type that is specific to that case. So you might have a different case type, but you won't see these activities. But when it's one of these case types, you will see all of this list as you're available at an activity to the case. Um, we ob obviously, we need to be uploading documents and so on and so on. So there are file fields on those. We need to know who the uh, evil employer was. So we have a, a contact reference field on the case because we then need to report back against how many times cases have been raised that point to the same evil employer. Um, I'm an evil employer, so I'm on their side. I'll just remind <laughs> Um, getting cases working for you. How are we going? We're good. Getting cases working for you. So, step one, you need the civi case component turning on. If you've never turned on a case component, go into your admin menu, click on admin, come down to systems, settings, um, components, turn it on. Surprise, you've got civi case on and you can't do anything. Why not? Because when you add a component on, it doesn't already come with the permissions that you've already set for all the other things that you're doing in CIVI. So you need to go back into your CMS permissions and turn it on, and you may also need to rebuild your menu to get them showing. Uh, so administer, you'll then see you've got CIVI case, and you've got case types, you've got case statuses. Why do you want case statuses? Well, because some case types might have a different capability of being put into pause mode or, or whatever the situation is. So you can make all of these. Redaction rules, I've done civi case for 12 clients and I'm kind of thankful none of them have asked us to do redaction, but it is in the there so that if you need to produce a report of a case, you can specify which fields will get redacted out. Redaction, I didn't know what it means, but it basically means you can't read it. So it's been Whited out by, or you know, um, whited out by somebody. Uh, this is the creating activity types. When you create an activity type, once you've got civi case enabled, you get the option of saying, "Do I want this activity type to only be available within the context of a case, or should it be available in civi CRM any, in in the bigger <coughs> civi CRM anyway?" Um, so it's about being a tidy. Kiwi, I was about to say, and making sure that you're only making what's relevant to the case types that you're um, doing. Again, case fields. And then when you've got your case type created, you then go, right, I want all those activity types like we had for the, um, for the union. And so we're then going through the bottom right there, add an activity type. So we're going to select all of those and add them to the activity type or create a new activity type if we'd forgotten to do it or found that there were new ones. Whew. Timelines and sequences. So this is where we can start getting really clever. If you need to, and for fortunately many systems don't need this, but if you need to say, hey, this needs to have been done within five days of the case being opened, and within two days of that something else needs to happen, you can set it in the case so that when you open a case, it creates this activity with a scheduled date. It creates the next activity with a scheduled date. And it will start beeping and going bright red and sending nasty emails to the assignee if you've reached that date and you haven't changed your activity to be completed, if you like that sort of thing. Um, the difference between timeline and sequence is that timeline allows you to step through this timing process. A sequence may, basically means you do... A, B after A, and we won't even show you what B is until you've done A. So do A, it'll then add B. Do B, it'll add C. Add, do C, and you might get through the alphabet. You can limit how many times an activity is repeated so that you can't say, you know, an unlikely example, but you're not allowed to ring this person more than five times. So you can limit how many um, activities of a particular case. Uh, this is the example of a timeline. So you can see that you've got um, the initial inquiry should happen within 10 days. 
of the open case. In fact, all of these are running off the, off the open case. Um, if I've got time... No, I've got it here. Uh, so this is another example where we're saying within five days of opening the case, you need to have done the initial assessment. Within 10 days of having done the initial assessment, you need to have done the final assessment. And within 20 days of that, you need... No, and within 20 days overall, you need to have filed a report. So depending on how quickly you jump from initial to final, you will have more time or less time to get your report written. So lots of niceness. Obviously, it comes with a dashboard. If you use CIVI and you've gone to CIVI member dashboard or CIVI contribution dashboard, very similar. Um, and, and this is what you see if you actually go straight into the case when you say, I want to manage this case. Across the top, you've got various fields pertaining to the case itself, which you can just jump into and edit there and then. You can change the case type. You can change the subject. Um, you can see in this case, the track case days, that's some um, customised stuff that's actually saying, we need to know how many days between the case being created and it being assigned, so we know how long it's sitting around, nobody's doing anything with it, and then again, how many days between the case being assigned and it being closed, and so that we can report back on both of those values. That's just a, just a calculated field that's going on somewhere on some post-hooky, developer-y, wordy thing um, that I don't need to know about, which is great. Um, and then right down at the bottom, you've basically got your list of activities, and if you need to, you can jump into any of those, edit them, reassign them. Um, CIVI comes with a bunch of reports based on CIVI case. Uh, we've got uh, Eileen's extended report extension on here, which then gives us the niceness of being able to build pivot tables around that so that we can, for example, spit out onto the client's dashboard, the user's dashboard, um, here's your current cases pivoted by gender and by year level uh, or by case status um, with percentages all delivering straight out of that. If something else happens that generates a CIVI activity that wasn't actually you know, done intentionally within the case, but you go, oh God, we should know about this and it should be part of the case, then for most activity types, you can say file it on the case and you click on there and it will show you the cases pertaining to that person in the first instance or potentially others if you need to. Uh, lots of resources out there. Obviously, the CIVI amazing documentation that's been done by the community. Um, what is CIVI case? Uh, there's a link there for the extended report extension so you can get those extra CIVI reports and the pivots. And if you need help with this stuff, go to the CIVI partners and find somebody you like to work with. Um, oh, and that's us. Um, we're, yeah, I uh, don't think I need to. Um, any, any questions? And how are we going for time? Have, we got, have I got five minutes? Yeah, five minutes, yeah. Can I actually run through building one of these things? Uh, maybe just want to say, I believe the core team have been working on this work, uh, funded by Company Corp uh, for running the UI on the city case, uh, and that's been done for extensions. So I'm going to have to redo all my screenshots. It's just, it's so thoughtless. Okay, pork allergy. Is this really the page I want to be on? No, that was the one you created. Um, New Zealand. Oh. Sorry, I found this little gidget that sets all my... Um, th this is actually jumping back to Gemma's presentation. I hate to do this. But this is a web form, um, simple, using values. So we've basically created a mini shop. These guys didn't need the power of commerce. They just needed to sell shit. Um, they needed to sell, sorry, um, they needed to, you know, sell a few caps and whatnot. So this is just, just civvy custom fields on the contribution that are being pulled into the web form and then being given a, a counter and the sizes. So if I want my hoodies... When I do my hoodies, who oh, look, here's conditionals. Let's put in what the hoodie size is for the first one and the hoodie size for the second one. And um, blah, blah, blah. And so this is going on. And we'll get ourselves a cap. And formula's ticking away. And it's going to charge me $68. Bingo, done. It's a really, really nice way of giving somebody a mini shop. Sorry, that was an aside. But I had it there from 
sometime. Uh, actions demo. This doesn't look like the right set of tabs at all. That's your ones. Oh, can I just... I'm just uh, what about back here? Okay, timelines. This is, if you're trying to do this yourself, and I recommend you do, um, get yourself a spreadsheet and try and work out... This, this is my help a Martian make a cup of tea in your kitchen and try and think through all the instructions that you need to provide them to be able to make the cup of tea properly, because we like tea made properly, and then try and label that down and then try and put them in sequence and then set, do your offsets, and by the end of this, you'll have a fairly clear idea of how many new activity types you'll need, what the offsets need to be in the timelines, and then try and knock half of them out because you've probably overdone it. Uh, we're going to have to refresh every one of these. Okay, so this is me enabling Civi Case. It used to be on the left, it's not now, it's on the right, and I'm saving. Bing, gone. Oh, how can I open these all up at once? Um, permissions. This is Drupal permissions, but if you've suddenly jumped into here, you've, you, you've opened up Civi Case, and you've gone, but I don't see it in the menu. I can't do anything. What's gone wrong? Well, it could be your menu needs to rebuild, but more likely, first step, jump into your permissions and get them sorted. Um, case types. So, we want to build a case type. I'm going to make a case type for brewing up a cup of tea. You get the theme going here. Um, so, that one probably was in the wrong order. So, we've, we, we create, this is the interface to create a new case type. So, we're creating a brew up. We've saved that. Yes, I do want to leave you because I've already done you. Um, and once we've done that, you'll see that we've now got these tabs down below saying what are the roles involved with this case type, what are the case statuses that you uh, want using, do you need to create a new one? Yes, I do. Oh, great, there's a button. You can just do it there and then. Um, and apparently this is going to get even better, so I, I, I'm, I'm excited by Christmas this year. Um, you need activity types. Okay, well, we've got a few activity types here, but didn't I have a big long list of other activity types? Well, let's get rid of that window and create a new activity type. We want to take the orders for who wants their tea with milk or with lemon. Um, so here we go. Open case, take orders. Well, we want the open, we want the take orders to happen basically straight off. And then we need to put the water in the kettle and turn the kettle on within five minutes of taking the orders. Otherwise, we're all going to get really annoyed in the office with the person who's making the tea. Oh, look, I've got a cool little icon there. How did I get that? There's just an icon field when you create the activity type. It's kind of cool. I didn't know it was there for a year. Gemma, Gemma went, oh, should we put some icons on this? Oh, good idea. Um, by the way, there is a deliberate error here. First one to spot it and explain it, I'll uh, see if we can fix it. Um, so we take the orders, we put the water in the kettle, we get out the cups, the milk and the sugar, put them on the tray within eight minutes. We pour the water in the teapot ten minutes and we pour the tea into the cups three minutes after the water gets poured into the teapot because we make tea properly. Are we good? Hmm? I've the tea. I'll buy you a cup <laughs> at tea time. Thank you. There were no tea leaves in the teapot. But, you know, Martian just followed instructions. Um, <laughs> activity type options. Oh, so this is really just to show... Uh, so, as you can see, when you create an activity type, there is now, like, there an entity that can be assigned to another entity. So we've got civi cases, uh, all the activity types that belong to civi case as opposed to civi case or just civi in general. Close that last screen. I don't think we need this one. Oh, it was my turn to make the tea. Damn. Um, so this is what's happened. I've assigned my. I've been assigned the case. It's my turn to make the tea. So the activities start from the bottom up. Not my preference, but it's how it goes. So uh, we've opened the case. Um, no, oh, apparently we removed somebody's case roll. Sorry, Gemma, you're missing out by the looks of it. Oh no, maybe you assigned it to me. Um, you take the orders, and as it, you do each of these activities, obviously they, they get completed, so they change colour, so you're not dealing with green ones. If they become overdue, then they've gone red, and we all know that red means you need to do it right now. Um, 
And I'm pretty sure that was that. So, have I really left you time for questions? Yes, I have. No. Excellent. Right, thank you very much. And we'll see you after uh, tea if you want to chat a bit. Ah, just, just in time. I'm thinking on the go. Can you use that for roster? Uh, uh, talk to me at talk, talk to me afternoon tea because I have, if, have you discovered Civi volunteer? Yeah. Well, let's talk about. Uh, I talk about. I said, any others going? Going? Gone. Thanks, very much. Thank you. Oh, I'll, I'll stop the record.